back. Welcome back to the playlist. Once again, my name is Kalisha. And if you're just tuning in, this is DJ Ben. What up? Once what up? Twos, and yes, we gotta sir. I see you. <laughs> I see you, Kay. What and up? <laughs> you're hilarious. You're hilarious. And we got a special guest here with me today. You might know him yeah. from the West Coast itself. Yes. The AD. Yeah, yeah. What's AD happened? in the what's building. Happened? My voice all fucked up. That's right. That's right. But it's okay. It's you partying, night. bro? You crazy partying? Crazy nights, crazy nights. <laughs> but first of all, can we just talk about your tat real quick on your head? Which one? The one that you just got done. The Kobe? Yes, yeah, the Kobe. that's crazy. Right Come there. On. I don't know if we can zoom in, but he got yeah. Kobe tatted on his head. It's crazy. Yeah, and it went viral. That's for the city up. right there, right? Yeah, man. You know that, that Kobe Kobe was like a LA's hero, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that shit sucks. Yeah, no, definitely sad, heartbreaking. I mean, man. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to jump right into it. Um, you just dropped a record, Discussion. Mm -hmm. So before we get into Discussion, <laughs> I want to talk about Discussion. Yeah. So what I took away from it, and, you know, we women, men struggle this all the time. You feel like when you're in a relationship, your partner shouldn't be, you know, questioning you. Questioning is okay. It's the obsessiveness of questions. What's the what kind of questions obsessiveness like? Let's talk about it. Cause so I'm like, not the one I question. Oh. I go through the phone. See, oh, oh. Sleep. I set alarms to wake up to look. Okay. This song probably about you. Why you all that? This song probably about you, Nick. I know. I was like, it was about her. See, look, this is the thing though. Like, I feel like there's billions of people in the world, and if we got to get to that point to with each other. We shouldn't fuck with each other. Because yeah. I ain't going to go through your phone and do all that shit in there, too, dealing with a nigga like me. You know what you signed up for. That don't mean I'm going to disrespect you. I'm going to make sure I come home every night. I'm going to take care of everything at the end of the day. I ain't going to make you look stupid out here. So why would you question me in the first place if everything is good across the board? But is it really good if she gets the feeling to want to look into your phone? You can look at my phone. Because, listen, I've dated a rapper before, right? Yeah. And he told me that he had to, you know, he had to flirt with women in order to, like, get them to come out, like, really fuck with his music. Like, oh, oh, we ate. I, I, I don't, bet you didn't think it was going to be this I don't beat. go against the, <laughs> no, it's cool. You know, I don't go against the bro code, but all I'm going to say is uh, straight up, I can say that literally I was in a relationship and I gave my phone password to my partner. Mm. So I feel like real for like two years and then I had to take it back. Yeah, take it back. Why? I had to take it back because I'm like, you can go on my phone anytime. So every time I'm asleep, of course, women hitting me up and shit. Who is this? Who? Wait, I'm like, you up in the bitch, you sleep? got the fucking, I don't know. I'm <laughs> sleeping. It's 3, 4 in the morning. What is you? you what, what more do you want? So I feel more comfortable. I was like, you know what? Now you lost your privileges and shit because I guess this ain't good enough. I thought it was doing, you know, being good, trying to show the person trust, but it actually backfired. You said mm. you thought you're doing good, but you really did yourself I mean, that. the thing is, if somebody holler at me, you know that's going to come with it and shit like that. You feel me? So I don't want to be woken up. I get in the house 4 or 5 in the morning anyway. I don't want to be waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning like, block this bitch. Like, I don't want to do that <laughs> shit. And then, and then it's like you're losing fans and shit, too. Like, why well, I got to block a fan at the yeah. end of the day? Right. No, it's you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's Bad. You pretty famous out here. Have you ever what? given your girl? Oh, come on, have you ever given your girl your password? Blowing the spot up. Yeah, I did. And yeah. it backfired. It backfired. Nah, that's not a good look. <laughs> Dave, he yeah. backfired. You want those messed up bad is a good nigga too, man. He is. So I don't understand, yeah. man. You tripping on bad. He is. Ain't no hope for us niggas, man. man. <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when I first met bad, I thought he was gonna be all hard and like ah ah ah. This the what? nicest what? nigga. <laughs> I'm like, trying. I haven't seen him Thank talk to no woman ever. Thank y'all, by the way, for putting ever. this on video. I'm going to pay y'all later don't for say this. That. Never seen I've never <laughs> seen bad talk to no woman in any type of like He only loves way. women, okay? So don't get the wrong idea, okay? <laughs> Wait, I ain't saying. He know what I mean. I'm saying like when he was in a relationship, I ain't never seen him step out of bounds at the end of the day. Yeah, you feel me? No, Not I, even kind of slip. He do his thing. He out, he out the door. So I'm like, if that nigga got some problems, then ain't no hope for us, man. <laughs> man listen, I, I told Shit. this story. My one of my best friends tried to hook me up with Bad a long time ago. She, right. she was dating his, his his roommate. L listen. And she's like, I got this cute guy for you. He's so cute. We got it together. And now y'all work together. Yeah, I got a girlfriend. Hmm. I'm like, girl, I don't want no parts, okay? No parts. I don't want to be fighting in these streets. Okay, gotta keep his face. Clean. Man, bad ain't come on no drama. <laughs> no, he don't. Well, he we tried no, dra he's just no like drama. Me, man. 
Are y'all from the same hood? Because y'all both from LA. Are y'all from the same hood? I'm from, no, Compton. He from Compton. Okay. He from Inglewood. I'm Inglewood. Okay. That's totally different. Okay. Yeah. So coming from the West Coast, Woo. coming from Compton, now we're seeing a lot of individuals, rappers coming together, regardless of you know what gang they're from. How do you feel about that being an artist? Has that changed anything um, for you? Have you I been think, together? I think it's dope. So like I'll give you an example. So, you know, if you know about me and my background, you know what I'm saying? I grew up in a predominantly crib neighborhood. So growing up, you didn't really get along with Bloods. You didn't get along with Pyrus and stuff like that. And, um, you know, once I started getting in the industry and started meeting people, like um, I remember when Game first came out. So when Game first came out, even though he was a Pyru, he was like a, like a hero to me. You know what I'm saying? Like really a hero to me. I was like, damn, this nigga come from the same spot I come from even though he down the street, but like I really was like like a big game fan. Um, I, I never seen Get Richard Die trying to this day because at the time I was like anything G-Unit I wasn't fucking with. I was riding with the West Coast for real, for real. Like, yeah. yeah, but at the time, you know what I'm saying? Like 50's dope, man, everything he do is dope. But at the time I was like, man, I'm riding with the West Coast. You know, I was on the East Coast, West Coast shit. Like I don't give a fuck, right. you know what I'm saying? And um, you know, just getting in the industry later, my first album is Game's album. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That happens, and then he's a power and then my second album is YG's album, and he's a power too. So it's like they're not even supposed to be rocking with me in that type of way or fashion anyway. So just to even have that and, you know, have those people who ain't supposed to like me like that anyway help further my career, shit dope as fuck. Yeah, when, when, did, when did that change, AD? When did that, like change for LA where people just started rocking together no, no matter what the hood. Was, you know, it, was it your generation or was it generation before or was it with Snoop and them? Nah, like, my generation before was fucked up. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm getting at. It's really it's really my generation because you know like when you growing up man you and your male role models is just like yeah. they're not getting money them niggas is doing drugs all day mm -hmm. they telling you to go bust on niggas and go do ignorant stuff at the end of the day. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, I grew up with like a lot of internal shit. So I see my homies killing each other. Mm -hmm. You feel me doing grimy things to each other. And I'm like, shit, these mm -hmm. niggas over here making money. They want to make money with us. Mm -hmm. I can't even come home and trust the niggas that I'm around and shit like that. Right. So, you know, for a lot of times it was really like money and music literally saved LA. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And bad is one of the reasons why mm -hmm. you feel me. Cause if you wasn't playing our shit and a D even them wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? Letting us come do our thing. Right. We'd probably be on Channel 5 News right now, everybody out here. You right, feel me? Right, yeah. right. No, that, Shout out Supreme Team one time. Shout out Supreme that, Team. No, what yeah. you said right there, people like bad, DJs like bad, you know, you know, bad, charisma, you know, playing the music in the club, like breaking those walls down to get artists that aren't signed to major labels heard. That is such a big deal. So yeah. when... You hear your record in the club mm -hmm. when you're playing it in the club and, you yeah. know, being from L.A., like, how does that make both y'all feel? Like, Yeah. I mean, I know for me, like, like guys like him literally made me a household name on the coast because, you know, out-of-towners come and they like, okay. What can't, is this? Yeah. You yeah. can't come to L.A. and not hear no A.D., you feel me? Oh, yeah. And then you go home and you take that and then it bridges everywhere else and shit like that. And the check comes in the mail and I'm happy. Okay. Yeah. Talk, talk, yes, talk. sir. But listen, yeah. you didn't you didn't start out as you know a mainstream artist. You started Hell no. as a battle rapper. Mm -hmm. What changed? Why? Um, really, my homeboy. Um, if y'all know who Mixed by Ali is, um, funny story. He's Kendrick's DJ engineer. He rocks with Dr. Dre and everything. Um, I literally was battle rapping. I was like really into bars when I was in high school. My favorite artist was like Dipset and shit. So like I was really like on the East Coast scene of music. Sound crazy too. I'm a West Coast nigga on this game bank shit, and I'm listening to all these East Coast rappers and shit. But um, nah, I literally I got kicked out of my high school, and um, I went to a party. Everybody for the new school I was going to was gonna be there. I ended up <laughs> going to jail for the first time. Yeah, and I ended up meeting him in the back of the police car, and uh. Both y'all got thrown in the back of the police car at the same time. Yeah, random. <laughs> Wow. And that's how I met him. And we wow. was in the back, like I was beating on the back of the police car. And he was, uh, <laughs> yeah, he was telling me, like, oh, he was like, yeah, we gonna, I'm going to do this in the industry. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this in the industry and all this shit, too. And, um, uh -huh. yeah, I went to jail that day. They let him go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you was banging on the back? Or why? Nah, why, they was. Why did you have to go and he didn't? I don't know what the fuck he did, but <laughs> no, I was literally at a party. It was a party in Compton. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, I walked in there, I'm turned up and shit, and then like a fight break out. And one of my homeboys, somebody like threw a chair, he got hit in the head with a chair. And I fucking like up. my childhood growing up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the police the right. police came and my when I walked out with my homeboy, he was mad because he, you know, somebody hit him in the head with a chair and like a police officer just tackled him. Like boom for no reason out of nowhere boom wow. so i was like officer you're like you ain't got to do him like that he ain't do nothing next thing you know i get hit in the head with a flashlight leg sweep and shit like that and at the time i didn't really know the law like that you know what i'm saying i'm used to cops being crooked and shit like that mm -hmm. so now i'm getting beat up you feel me by a cop i kind of get up like got my stance up and shit because i'm like the fuck you doing you feel me i ain't do nothing and then the partners came over there they whooped my ass you feel me and they put the handcuffs on me. you done i'm like i'm done Picked me up, you know what I'm saying, threw me in the back of the police car. And then I woke up the next morning. I thought I was going to get out of jail. They was like, yeah, you got three uh, felony accounts of resisting arrest and Damn. all that. Yeah, I called my mom and she screaming at me. They said you're trying to fight police officers and all type of shit like that. Yeah, but um, from that, you know, that's why I met Ali. Ali bought me around Kendrick early on, J-Rock. Um, I wasn't allowed. I wasn't old enough to get into the clubs yet, but like Kendrick and Jay Rock and Schoolboy and all them, they took me to like my first 18 over club in Hollywood and shit. And yeah, that's kind of how I started getting into it. But he told me he was like, "Man, fuck all that battle rap shit. Like, this not how you make a record." So I thought, when you make records, it's like you gotta have bars. You gotta have bars and shit. And he used to be like, "Nigga, you have bars, but you don't have no swag when you're rapping." You know what I'm saying? Like. So to be like a battle rapper, go from a battle rapper to be a nigga that you hear in the clubs all the time, it was like that he implemented in my head and shit too. So, you know, making songs like that is more about the feeling versus trying to rap and write bars and shit. Wow, that's, that's an interesting story from going to jail and back of the police car, <laughs> shit. Yes. <laughs> so you've been through some shit. Okay, oh, a lot you've of been shit. through some shit, and you have a crazy vibe, like a crazy dope personality. Yeah. Like, what do you what do you do to keep that vibe? Is that that, that seems to just be you? I mean, for the the thing is, is that I really come. I'm, I come from like house getting shot up twenty four times, best friend killed on my porch, countless funerals, family in prison, little brother doing seven eight years and stuff like that. And I, I kind of look at it like God made me the chosen one. I was able to make it out, live out my dreams at the end of the day. And that's something to be positive about. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you got good guys like Rob and shit come help out and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all help each other. And, um, you know, I, I think I got every day to uh, smile and be happy about shit. Because where I come from, you know where I came from, you be like, damn, that nigga, you feel me? Like, he been through a lot, a lot of shit. So, smile. I ain't going back to the hood. I am going the old lifestyle. I like walking to Starbucks and shit. You feel me? <laughs> Buying poodles and stuff. Yeah, come on. Nigga live down the street now. I ain't going back to that shit. I love it. So speaking of happiness, I'm sure a lot of your experiences have, you know, worked its way into the music. What's one of your projects that's made you really happy? Um, My entry level project, really, Um, I was dropping mixtapes. Really wasn't getting heard like that and then i dropped this project called blue 89 and if y'all heard the song juice on there like that shit changed my life so mm -hmm. yeah i really i was really in the hood with my daughter I had like 50 bucks to my name wow. and yeah like before that i was working at target because i was like i was like you know i was on the streets hustling and shit i was like um i know what it's like to not have you know your father in your life like that so i didn't want to like had my daughter see me behind bars. I was like, I'm gonna take the L and get a regular, I mean, get a regular job. So I was working at Target and like every day I tell them niggas, I was like, nigga, I ain't gonna be here long. One day you're gonna hear me on the radio and you're gonna do all this right. Yeah. And niggas to be like, ah, whatever. Yeah. And then a year go by, you still there. They like, yeah, nigga, go put the motherfucking uh, vegetables over there and shit, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> did you, nah. Did you ever have anyone come to you and like recognize you or? No, it's crazy. Like literally, like the whole staff. So I got, I got fired, and um. Uh, Shout out to being fired. Yeah, I got fired. Right before too. <laughs> the week that I, the week that I got fired, I got my first paid show. It was only for a hundred dollars, but mm -hmm. I knew that I was like God put me in the step in the right direction, and then like literally, the, the, all my old, old old coworkers, they was like, yeah, nigga, we just heard you on up uh, Power One Six. So hey. I was like, told you niggas, man. Yeah, hey. no, absolutely. Like, speaking it into existence, I've had regular jobs myself, and I'm like, I'm not going to be there long. I'm not going to be there long. And the next thing, you know, you know, I'm I'm, I'm here. It's crazy. It's that self-faith, though. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You, uh, what's your religion? What's your, what's your, you believe in God? 
Yeah, what the fuck? I'm just, no, cause, I'm just oh, Chris, I was sure, like, what I've religion? Heard people and they're like, no, I, I'm not. Like, you know, I'm into, you know, horoscopes and numerology. But see, the thing is, like, that. if I didn't have God in my life, I wouldn't be here right now talking to you or even doing what I'm doing no, at the funny. end of the day. So, no, don't get it wrong. I believe in God, too. Okay. I'm about to say, uh, nigga. I'm not no atheist or nothing. Okay. I believe in God. I was I like, just, I see the, the, the Buddha shit. I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be beefing up here. Um, but no, I mean, definitely God is the reason why we're all here, number one. Let's wow. let's just say that. Take but we all, we all deal with struggles, and I'm sure you have dealt with some struggles yourself. You're an independent artist. What's something that you struggle with every day as an independent artist? There's other independent artists out there, but I want to know what you deal with. So this is the thing. Like, when people see me and they see how I, the features that I get, the type of platforms I'm on, they be like, nigga, who are you signed to now? I get that shit all the time, so... I have to work like 50 times harder than, you know, somebody in the major. And then I didn't like turn down a lot, a lot of situations. Really? Like what? Yeah. Because like I always pictured myself um, like Nip, RP to Nip. He was like an architect of that too. Like he didn't go the traditional route where he got a deal mm -hmm. and, you know, then try to, you know, do everything. And I feel like a lot of artists, um, they, some artists need this shit though. Like, they really, really need it. Like, you need somebody to facilitate all that yeah. shit, though. And, you know, Russ is another one, too, where you drop your own shit. You make your own independent um, projects. You make your own money. You know what I'm saying? You do your own concerts. You do your own shows. Then you go get the big bag from the label. Instead of being a, in a 360 deal, you go get a partnership. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then, yeah, then you get, you know, everything broke breaking down. They pay for the big marketing budgets instead, and you get put on the bigger platforms and stuff like that, too. So, yeah, like, I went from having, like, $500 checks to thousands to 5000 10000 a month and shit like that. So, shit just keep growing. It's like you. Hey. No, that shit, that hey. shit is real. Like, hey. Yeah. But hey. they can, Let's the go, labels, Let's yeah. go. Let's yeah, go. Let's go. The <laughs> labels can see that, and they can see, like, how many numbers you're doing and gauge, okay, you're doing this many streams this amount of time in this year. This is, this is. And they'll say, okay. We can bring that shit up and make you do this if we put you on a platform. Mm -hmm. Now you're getting like, you know, all the BTs, everything. But I still go to the wars and do all the shit too, though. So. So what would a deal have to look like for you if you were to sign a deal? What would it have to look like? It's I mean, not we talking to Empire right now. We talking to yeah. Republic. We talking no, I'm with right I'm with Empire right now. Okay, you, so you yeah. work with Empire. Yeah, but okay. that's that's distribution though. Right. Yeah, right. but I mean, like, I can go get a hundred thousand dollar budget anytime from like any company, $150,000 budget. The thing is, is that it's not really a number for me as far as signing, it's about how is my business gonna be and you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of artists that y'all listen to, they in fucked up situations right now. Yeah. And like five, 10 years down the line, you see them, you be like, what happened to them? How they don't got no money? Like mm -hmm. um, for R. Kelly, for example, R. Kelly, before he went to jail, the nigga was living in hotels, you feel me? Wow. Yeah, so how, he, he AD, had to sell how, all his cars. How how big is ownership of your material mm. to you? I mean, it's your shit. You making it hot. Yeah. And I have, you know, like, I have some of the closest friends that, that are assigned to every fucking label. Mm. And I asked them, like, hey, what's it called? Want me to come over here? Should I come over there? They're like, nah, man, fuck that. And blah, 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 blah. Mm. I don't like this. And he go across the board. I'm like, y'all niggas, none of y'all niggas like this shit. You yeah. feel me? Mm. No, a lot like, of none of y'all really like it. But that's because, you know, they really don't have the say so. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the labels really ain't helping them like that. Right. You know, like I ain't gonna put no artists on blast, but I got homies that really just do everything and the label get credit for the shit. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? They put their own money up, they can get the money back, but for the most part, they're not doing anything that's pushing them forward that they can't do for themselves. Wow. No, yeah, I mean, more and more I'm hearing artists talking shit about their label. They don't want to be a part of it. They're in, and, you know, in and now if you have the money, you can pay for the label services without being on the label. Mm -hmm. So if you got like thirty, forty thousand 40000 to put towards marketing, you're going to get thirty, forty thousand 40000 put towards marketing. You know what I'm saying? That's going to make sense. The same people that this artist go to, same person that this go to. So it's all about the bag. The only thing about independent artists that really fuck them up, they don't have no money to start nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's wild. So when, when artists do sign with a label, can you bring your team with you? Like, how does that work? Or they give you a whole new team? Like, no, you can't work with these people. We got your own marketing. We got your own I team. I mean, like, it, how does it depends how hot you is. You feel me? You may get in there and say, this is my manager. They'll be like, no, nigga. 
Oh, wow. You know I'm, yeah, because. But I you got to go in there and what? Be an asset. For you him. have to be an asset. I mean, to be a, a lot of times, because people don't know, it's like if you sign to a label, they really will give you one chance or two chances at most. So they'll put 350000 400000 into you. If they don't recoup that back, they're going to put you on a shelf and you just a tax write-off. And they own you know, own you for the next five, six years, and you can't put out nothing. Wow. Yeah, that's what, wow. it, you know. And I heard recently, too, they, they take your social media passwords and they end up owning, like, your social oh, media. Oh, yeah, so well. now now they'll get your social media. They'll make your social media, blow that shit up, and once they're done with you, snatch that shit, too. Damn. It's like yeah. all that work kind of going to waste but and then if they shelf you. If you. But if you're a good artist and if you're somebody that's an asset, they're going to do what they're supposed to do. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like Roddy Rich, for example. Atlantic is making his shit go crazy. Yeah. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? They kind of pick and choose. Yeah, but you have to show them, you know what I mean? And they have to, at the end of the day, it's, a, it's business. You got to look at the numbers and shit like that. Mm -hmm. You know, why would I invest a million dollars in somebody that's getting 300 streams a week? Mm -hmm. That don't, that's, that don't seem like no million dollar shit. And labels now, they don't, they're not taking risks how they used to back in the days. Yeah. They want a full proof and that's business. Shit, if I give you $100, I want my 100 back. I don't want $20 back, you know what I'm saying? Shit free. So I understand the shit. So when you go on these other labels and shit, you just say, hey, look, I already got this, I already got this, I already got this, I already got this. Yeah. Songs with these people, they cleared, good, whatever, run it. Well, you're an amazing artist, so I'm not even Thank worried you. about that. Yeah. Ain't worried. Thank you. So you come from a battle rap background, as we yeah. already discussed. Okay, can I ask you to do like a freestyle with a beat using the playlist in it? No. No? <laughs> no, not at all? All right, all right. You already got me performing after this shit. My voice is <laughs> fucked up. That is about to hold me out, huh? Listen, it was Nigga like freestyle question. all fucking day. Okay. So God damn, can't. playlist. I'll come back and do it. <laughs> all right, you can come back and do it. But okay, so what's coming for you? Um, What's actually, coming for you? actually, um, of course, more music and shit like that. Um, me and Wiz working on a lot of shit. Me and OT working on a lot of shit. Um, mm -hmm. I'm working with everybody, niggas know. But I'm um, actually on my first TV show that I'm that I um, got a couple episodes into. Yeah, um, Lil Dicky got a show coming out next month. It's called Dave. You probably see the billboards everywhere. So I did three episodes on that show. So I'm on my acting shit too now. Okay. Word. Wow. Hey, that boy AD. Yeah, FX, Listen. Hulu, Westside. The playlist come with some movies, too. So. Yeah, no, just doing them acting roles and meeting the directors, I was just having fun with the shit. I didn't go for, like, no audition or nothing like that. And the director was like, you did real good. You need to keep doing this shit. I was like, fuck it, nigga. Word? Yeah, hell yeah. I'm like, <laughs> let me get on my Denzel, too. Nice. No, nah, but I always wanted to be an all-around uh, all entertainer. That's why, you know, I look up to Ice Cube and Will Smith and shit like that. Childish Gambino, too. You know, like, because you can't put them in no box. Yeah. And I never want to be put in no box at the end of the day. Yeah. Right. So I'm fucking tap dance, too, if that's what in the stars for, nigga. Okay. Feel me? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that. Can you come back and tap dance for us? I got a freestyle tap dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. We ain't putting you in no box. The, play, the playlist is, they slaving me out here. <laughs> stop it, stop it. Sorry. But like AD said, we have an amazing performance coming up in just a few. So stop that. Yeah.